everybody. Steve here with another video. And um, I'd like to thank all of you who have subscribed uh, recently to our page. And um, we're very happy about that. And all of you who also are listening to our videos, who maybe haven't subscribed yet, definitely urge you to do so. Um, helps us grow our page. And um, what we're really all about is helping people uh, with issues, help them come to a common sense understanding of Christ Christianity, and uh, also deal with some of the things that um, our trials, some of the things that kind of get in our way of understanding the Christian faith. And uh, we've been doing a lot of videos on uh, narcissism, narcissism in the church, narcissism in our own personal lives. And I certainly help, help, uh, hope that those are helping. And I'd like to give a shout out right now to the uh, Facebook group, the Covert Narcissism Group, which we've been uh, interacting with a, a lot of people, learning and sharing experiences uh, with narcissism, and many of which have happened in a church setting. So uh, we're really concerned about that, and we want to address those issues on, on this page, as well as many, many more. But I just want to give a shout out uh, to that group right now. And uh, what we're going to uh, you know, continue to talk about is um, narciss narcissism in our uh, personal relationships. And like I said before, many of which happen in a church or quote unquote Christian environment. And we're really concerned because we think it gives Christianity a bad name when we come across narcissists, even uh, either in the church or in you know, our personal lives or the people that we meet in church or the people that we have relationships with who are, are Christians or claim to be Christians. We, we think that that is a, a very big issue, especially now with the seemingly the seeming growth of narcissism in our culture and uh, and in the church. So we want to deal with these issues of uh, narcissism in 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 our own personal lives and and some of the things that happen when we are interact with narcissists. So one of the things that I wanted to mention today, or actually a couple, three or four, um, is that have you ever noticed that in your relationship with the narcissist, conflict never seems to get resolved? It's It seems like there's something that's always hanging, you know, over you and the uh, narcissist half of your relationship. You're never able to resolve conflicts. You have talks, you have arguments, you have disagreements, you have all kinds of conflict, but the actual issue is never resolved. And that's because the narcissist is a master at deflecting, at changing, at gaslighting, at putting the blame on you so that you get so frustrated that you either just stop talking about the situation or you get angry or hurt or you feel overwhelmed and you can't deal with the situation. And then it just resolve, it, it just goes unresolved for years and years and years and years. And just know that it is, it is not you, it is the conflict that the narcissist is having where he can't focus on what the issue is because in their mind, it, you know, they feel like they they have to avoid any kind of blame or any any kind of criticism. And they will go into rage if they think that there is any blame being placed on them. Or if, you know, the situation is their fault, rather than to openly admit that, you know, oh, I made a mistake or I'm doing things wrong, they will fight tooth and nail to avoid that. And that's because of their narcissism. So another thing that I wanted to um, mention is that because of this, because things don't get resolved, we often feel like, you know, it is our fault that we try to change the way we approach a narcissist or we try to change how, you know, we talk or how we interact. But unfortunately, none of these things, none of these things will work and you'll just become unhappy. And then eventually you 
you'll your expectations will be lower where you know you won't even look to resolve issues you won't even look to to um make things right and you kind of just live in day to day in some kind of funk or vacuum but that's all because of how the narcissist reacts to any kind of uh challenge or any kind of um understanding of the conflict and then you know you'll wind up just feeling like you're basically a zombie just going day to day without anything happening but once again know that this is 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 not your doing it all comes under the purview of the fog that a narcissist places over just about everything so even simple conversations will become so confusing and so um jumbled that you won't even be able to have a simple conversation because a narcissist will attack you and a jump at you and put the blame on you another thing that you'll find happening is that the narcissist will, will get in the way of your relationships and it's not always you know it's, it's not always uh out and out that he will damage your relationships a lot of times it's subtle he will you know use things he will or she will say things that will make you think and that will uh, you will say well you know i don't want to fight with him so i just won't do a b or c or i just won't see my family or i just you know don't want to be in that kind of situation where it's going to make the narcissist feel uncomfortable or you will feel embarrassed uh, you won't want to go anywhere with the narcissist because you know what's going to happen when you go somewhere with the narcissist and you know they're with your family or they're with your friends or you know you you're going to feel uncomfortable in those kind of situations so rather than to, to do it you just kind of avoid it which in a sense is playing right into the narcissist's hands because he doesn't want you to have those relationships or she doesn't want you to have those relationships where it's going to strengthen you make you feel good make you feel loved make you feel um in any way dependent on your friends or your family and not being dependent on the narcissist the narcissist can't take that because he or she feels like you know you're giving that love and that supply to somebody else and not to them and they want all of it narcissists are very greedy in the sense that they want to suck you drive just about everything and um i i will admit that sometimes the narcissist do, does this and he doesn't or she doesn't realize what they are doing um because of the personality disorder they can't understand really what they are doing to you and then that falls into the you know you, i'm sure you've often heard that narcissists have no empathy and uh, they don't they don't have any empathy they can't put themselves in your you know in your shoes even though they might say it even they, they might claim to understand how you feel they are incapable of really understanding how you feel so that the things that they do to you pretty much you know pretty much goes over their head they are not able to empathize with you in any kind of way and what what they are good at is projecting onto you so in other words if you if you uh if you get too close to a narcissist you know area of weakness they will project whatever you're saying about them onto you making you feel like you're the one who is is not being empathetic or you're the one who is not being understanding or you're the one who is um you know projecting bad behaviors they'll project that onto you and if you don't know anything about narcissism it will confuse you and it'll actually actually have you thinking to yourself well i wonder if it is me you know i wonder if you know something is wrong with me and you you'll go in and do the introspection and in all in, in many cases you know you will find yourself to blame when you actually aren't but this is all these are all devices of the narcissist in order to put you on the defensive and to make you feel inadequate so as the more you learn about narcissism the more you will learn all of the tricks that they use to make you feel um not yourself to make you feel less than yourself and so knowledge is power 
And in knowing these things, you will soon recognize that you definitely are not the one uh, at fault. It is the narcissist who is putting you through the ringer and that you need to learn how to, to cope with these things and, and, and to fight back. Now, um, in the Facebook group, I, uh, I quoted a scripture, which I would like to read now for our YouTube listeners. And I would like you to read it too, when you get a chance. And um, this scripture really helped me in terms of dealing with narcissists, because a lot of the things that this scripture will say are are, are things that uh, that the narcissist um, actually perpetuate, and some of the qualities that I'm going to read here in this scripture exactly fit a narcissist. So let me read it to you. It's Second uh, Timothy three one through seven. And um, when you get a chance, read it on your own too. So um, a lot of times you can listen to something, but when you actually read it, it sinks in a little more. But for but for the time being, I'm going to read it because maybe many of you may not have access to a Bible. So I'd like to read it just so you can understand. And once again, that's 2 Timothy 3 and 1. And uh, I'll close with reading this. And it says, but understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, avoid such people. And I'll stop there at verse five. I know I said to verse seven, but I'll stop there at verse five. And um, the last line really tells it all where it tells us to avoid such people. Um, a lot of times that is the only avenue we have against narcissists to avoid such people. Now, I know it's, it is absolutely hard if you are in a, a marriage with a narcissist and it is exceedingly, exceedingly hard to, uh, avoid a person with whom you live with. And I'm not advocating that, you know, you divorce or anything because, you know, I don't know your individual situation, so I'm not going to make a blanket statement. But the seriousness of, of narcissism is, is here in this scripture. And it lets us know some of the traits uh, that a narcissist will have. And I think the reason why it says avoid such people is because these things are so to toxic that if you are a Christian or if you are a person any person uh, for that matter, it is going to be a toxic situation if you are involved in uh, with a person uh, such as this. So uh, read it when you get a chance. Once again, it's 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Um, read the whole chapter to get the context, but uh, this portion here, I think, has to do with narcissistic people. And you will see some of the traits here spoken of in the Bible. Uh, about it. So um, I just want to thank you for listening. Uh, once again, thank you for taking the time. I hope this helps some of you. Um, I'm going to do some more videos on narcissism. Next couple of days, I'll post another video. But uh, I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully, it will help. As always, I'll be praying for you. Leave your comments. Um, I'd like to get some feedback. Make sure I'm on the right track helping you guys understand what narcissism is, especially in a spiritual Christian environment, Christian relationship. But more and above that, it really is for uh, anyone who is uh, dealing with narcissism or thinks they are and, and need to uh, hear some things that will help them deal with the situation. So once again, thank you for listening. I appreciate it. And I will see you next time.